Over the past semester, my team and I have been working with the New York City Council to assess the opportunities and barriers of urban agriculture in New York City. Our client, FoodWorks, is part of the City Council's policy division. Um, and they aim to address issues at every phase of the food system, from agricultural production to post-consumption. They, uh, they also have strategic actions to address health, community, development, and environmental sustainability. And they aim to support urban-rural linkages, like preserving and increasing regional food production and supporting a growing body of farmers in New York City. There's been a recent explosion of interest nationwide in urban agriculture and increasing growth and interest in New York City. The project we were tasked with was investigating the opportunities for urban agriculture in New York City and barriers to entry, specifically looking at rooftop agriculture. In addressing this issue, um, some of our goals were to first assess opportunities for growth in rooftop farming, um, as well as to determine what relevant data the city currently holds and collects. We wanted to identify barriers faced by interested rooftop farmers and also come up with a set of um, building metrics that determine whether or not a site is suitable for a rooftop farm. Uh, with this information, we look to explore possible incentives to encourage urban farming practices, such as tax abatements um, that could encourage building owners to actually go out and seek out farmers to set up agricultural products or projects on their roof. Um, for a point of comparison, we also looked to several different cities um, and the projects that they've started with urban agriculture to inform uh, New York City policy changes. To go about addressing these objectives, um, we, our first step was to conduct interviews with urban agriculture stakeholders, um, including both farmers and experts in the field. Um, and through certain site visits to different farms, we were able to assess barriers to entry and also identify different policy changes that the city could make to remove these barriers. We also conducted a GIS analysis of suitable rooftop properties. Um, and this allowed us to first sort of assess how much room there actually is in New York City for rooftop farms, um, but to also make estimates about how much different tax abatements would cost the city. Um, and we also did a synthesis of various um, relevant information from different resources into one useful document. Um, in our site visits, we aim to study a broad range of farms with contrasting goals and business models. Brooklyn Grange is an urban commercial rooftop farm in Long Island City that produces food for sale. High School for Food and Finance uh, is a public school and a pioneer in aquaponics. Boswick Farms uh, focuses on an educational component of urban agriculture and Bright Farms operates hydroponic rooftop farms um, in greenhouses on top of mostly grocery stores. They design, finance, build, and manage the whole operation at no cost to the retailer. We also talked with a bunch of experts in the field. Um, Kubi Ackerman is um, a project manager at the Urban Design Lab looking at potential for urban agriculture in New York City. Michael Hurwitz um, is the former director of a non-for-profit um, that sets up a 2.5 acre farm um, looking at youth development and community development. Uh, Kyle Twitchell is a structural engineer looking at building metrics that make buildings suitable for rooftop farms. And Alec Bott is um, the founder of an organization called Farming Up that supports rooftop farming in the city. 
Uh, in our research, we identified several different barriers to urban agriculture in New York City. Um, generally speaking, there's a lack of streamlined and directed process for setting up farms in the city. Um, part of this problem is that zoning and permitting processes are unclear um, and unknown and difficult to navigate. It's um, important to note that there's a lot of different bureaucratic issues um, and that policy and, and regulations were sort of written before urban agriculture was a concern. Um, so a lot of these issues aren't strictly specifically prohibitive um, to urban agriculture. They're just not really designed to deal with it because it's such a new topic. Um, it's often difficult for farmers to find rooftop space. Um, building structures have to be robust enough to hold a farm on top and big enough to be financially viable for a farm. Scalability is also an issue. Uh, higher rents lead to higher food prices and also it can be hard to scale up when your farm is on a roof. You can't really expand outward. It's often difficult um, to find efficient distribution channels for rooftop farmers. Um, and unless farms are located directly on top of grocery stores or restaurants, especially. Uh, financing is a huge barrier. Uh, urban farms have huge capital costs and um, it can be difficult to raise these funds. Uh, urban farms also have to compete with traditional ag agriculture, which has lower costs and not all of these hurdles to deal with. As part of our research, we identified uh, various incentives, both existing and potential future incentives. Uh, one existing incentive is a green roof tax abatement, which um, discounts taxes to buildings with green roofs um, on a per square foot basis. And this is just starting to be applied to rooftop farms. Um, there's a proposal for a zone green tax text amendment, which would get rid of the Florida area requirements for um, greenhouses on top of buildings. And we also identified uh, opportunities for future incentives, such as um, rewarding rooftop farms for um, different environmental benefits like energy efficiency, classifying them as green infrastructure. We looked at three different cities um, to compare best practices. We looked at Chicago, San Francisco, and Seattle. Um, and Building on these um, cities and their practices, we think that New York can be a leader in urban agriculture. Part of our research was a um, GIS analysis of the city. Um, we were looking mainly for buildings with a footprint of over 30,000 square feet, because that's about how big a farm has to be to be financially viable. And we found that there's a ton of buildings out there. There's almost 1,000 buildings um, with over 8,000 acres. Um, so there's a ton of potential for rooftop farms. Um, and then the second thing that this data tells us is we can make calculations or estimates about how much um, different tax abatements would cost the city um, based on different scenarios. Like if 5% of building owners responded to a certain tax abatement that discounts them 50% of their property taxes or something like that, then the city can calculate from that what it would actually cost them to implement that policy. <laughs> so with all this information, we were able to um, make some recommendations to the city. Uh, the first was to streamline information. Um, sorry, I don't have my notes for this because it's not presenter tools, um, but 
the, the general problem um, that we found was a lack of streamlined and accessible information. Um, so that's one thing that the city can fix. Um, also, there are a bunch of different departments in government that are responsible for um, various policies that affect urban agriculture. Um, and there's also just a very diverse body of stakeholders, um, farmers and distributors that the city can support. Uh, existing policy um, can be amended to better suit agriculture um, in the city. Uh, the city can also create a database of potential buildings uh, that could be accessed by interested parties. Um, so they can see different buildings of different sizes and, and contact the building owners and try to set up farms. So we think that the best way to move forward and for the city to accomplish these different goals is to set up a dedicated department of urban agriculture as part of the city council. So we started working with FoodWorks, um, which defined itself as a vision to improve New York City's food system. And we think that the next step for FoodWorks is to turn into an office of urban agriculture. Um, and you know, with a web presence like this, they could be a valuable resource for farmers in the city. Um, they can have information on their website about policy and tax credits, um, the land database that I just mentioned, food policy, um, new and, and upcoming food policies, uh, different education programs and, and other resources. Uh, so we think that this project has potential for future groups in the um, workshop. And some things that future groups could work on is first uh, surveying building and landowners to um, gauge their interest in rooftop farming and see what it would actually take to incentivize them to go seek out farmers to try to set up farms on their roof. Also to research agricultural viability specific to specific, na specific neighborhoods or building types. Uh, for example, like what would it take to set up a farm on every roof of a school in the Bronx? Um, we, we feel that research has to be more focused in the future and this is one way to do that. Um, another thing that future groups could do is assemble a resource guide for interested parties um, with actual links to pages where they can read about policies um, and to help the city council to actually start building this Office of Urban Agriculture. Um, a big problem for urban agriculture and, and the development of rooftop farming is the difficulty for cost-benefit analysis, just because there's so many ways that a rooftop farm can save the city money or have environmental benefits. And these benefits are really hard to quantify. So future groups could work on quantifying these positive externalities. Um, going along with that, it's a little bit unclear where urban agriculture stands in regards to green infrastructure. Some people think that because um, urban farms reduce heat island effect and have stormwater retention benefits that they should be qualified as green infrastructure, but the policies and laws don't really work out yet. Um, so having research into that issue would be helpful. And that's it. Thank you very much.